trees as far as the eye can see. This is northern Saskatchewan, and this is the enemy. One spark can start an inferno. Today, the battle against fire is fought from above. Planes drop water and chemicals onto the flames, although there was a time when those planes dropped men. I think if I had to do it over again, I'd probably do the same thing. I look back on it, that was the time of our lives, actually. They were young, strong, and looking for adventure. They needed to be to do this job. They were Saskatchewan smoke jumpers. Frank Tompkins has a way with rookies. In the 1950s and 60s, Frank Tompkins trained the smoke jumpers, and he was the star of this film, Diary of a Smoke Jumper. I was hoping someday I might uh, become a pilot, but... Uh... Then when I got to find out what smoke jumping was all about, I figured I liked jumping better than, uh, than flying, and if I could fly and jump out of airplanes as well, well, I had the best of both worlds, so I stayed with it. Some smoke jumpers were local boys, like John Beatty. I was born and raised in Laurens, and uh, I used to see these guys jumping, practicing here, right? So when I was about 19, I decided to try it out. Others were paratroopers from Great Britain, like John Neal. But I didn't know exactly what was involved other than parachuting, which was my main interest at that time. Yeah. The smoke jumpers were formed in 1947 to protect more than 30,000 square kilometres of northern forest. The smoke jumper would parachute into the fire and put it out before it took off. If there was a small fire started out, you'd say, oh, start small, of course. And uh, if you got there quick enough, you could actually put it out or at least uh, keep it under control until such times an overland crew would come in and, and uh, take over. The high collar here is to deflect the branches. Before they became smoke jumpers, each man had to go through six weeks of training. They started us off with uh, long runs. Of course, we were wearing work boots at the time, and uh, so that toughened you up pretty good. And. Uh, then we had our tumbling off the back of the truck uh, while the truck was moving. And we had, uh, we had some tower jumps. The smoke jumpers spent all their time together at work and at play. You trained together, you drank together, you had bar fights together and defended each other. And, that, and you did all these things together and you built a unit. After training to jump from a tower and a few practice jumps, the smoke jumpers were ready for their first taste of smoke. There was a uh, fire in sort of scrub poplar over by Porcupine Plains, and it was a bit of a, a tough thing because uh, one of the guys uh, made a little error. He panicked a little bit as we, as he was going to land, and he ended up breaking his thigh. And it was kind of traumatic getting him out of there. They try to land in a clearing, but they couldn't always control their chutes, and they'd end up in the trees without much protection. Jumping, all you had was uh, you had a canvas padded uh, clothing that you wore with the high collar to deflect any branches and also a mask and a football helmet to, you know, in case you fell on your head. Amazing as it seems, no smoke jumper was ever killed in a jump. Although once they survived the fall and the fire, they had to endure a long hike to the nearest lake, the only place a plane could land to pick them up. In those days, when I started anyway, uh, you know, there was no such thing as helicopters. If you jumped in on the fire, it didn't matter how far the fire was from a lake. Well, you had to pack everything out, and, uh, and you know, the, your pack could get pretty heavy after a while. We jumped in on a fire one time, and we had a 25-mile pack out. And uh, <laughs> during the pack out, uh, which took uh, three days, we got a downpour of rain, uh, rain like hell, and, uh, and everything was soaked. And uh, I threw my pack on the scales when I got back and weighed 120 pounds, so i packed 120 pounds through muskeg and swamps and everything else. It was pretty rugged, uh, pretty, pretty, pretty rugged shore, so he had to be in fairly good condition. Jumper! Frank Tompkins made $7.50 a day, and sometimes those days were pretty long, although one thing made it all worthwhile. If you love jumping, it didn't matter, you know, because in, in those days, uh, 
uh, we used to try to buy jumps from one another. It didn't matter whether it was a fire jump or not. Even though it was going to be a lot of, a lot of work afterwards, the, the jump was worth 25 bucks. But uh, I don't know every, anybody ever actually being bought. You know, the, the jump was uh, worth it. The smoke jumpers were effective firefighters. But in 1967, the government disbanded the program, replacing men with machinery. Down to the post office, what are the most wanted? Those men reunited this summer in La Ronge, where they watched a demonstration of the water bombers that grounded them. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of familiar faces and unfamiliar bodies. <laughs> you know? And uh, as I say, and I says, I hope you all behave yourself better in your 60s than you did in your 20s. Here comes her sketch one, smoke jumper flag. The town unveiled a plaque to honor the smoke jumpers for their service. And although they have thinner hair and thicker waists, they're still jumpers at heart. It's the best thing that ever happened to have a reunion and I suppose it's just like uh, having another jump again. <laughs> it's, it's that great. For CBC News Hour, I'm Jeff Bohatch. <laughs>